kept saying, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, help, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. At the Michigan Attorney General's office launching tonight a new investigation into Lakeside Academy in Kalamazoo after the death of a 16-year-old male student. Police say the boy died at the hospital Friday after going into cardiac arrest on Wednesday. Investigators say the boy was being restrained after throwing a sandwich and then he became unresponsive. News Channel 3's Mike Krasick is joining us live at Lakeside Academy where this all happened with new details tonight. Mike. Well, Andy, the president of Lakeside Academy's board says there's a lot of unrest on campus right now. Neighbors who live around here say to just today they saw uh, multiple boys running away from the campus. The family of one now former resident who says he left in fear for his own safety and now others have followed. Lisa Ackley's 15 year old grandson, a Lakeside student, says he watched staff restrain his friend. The little boy was kept saying, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, help, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, as they shoved his head into the floor. Police say Lakeside staff restrained the 16-year-old boy after he threw a sandwich. Investigators tell us the Michigan boy went into cardiac arrest. They covered him up because they didn't even know how to do CPR, which is disturbing. Lakeside would not release details surrounding the incident. In the aftermath, the State Department of Health and Human Services says it plans to remove 47 kids in state custody from Lakeside. Eight other states plan to do the same. At least 25 students have left the facility for troubled teens in the past few days. They're seeing the, the, the unrest, so they know this may not be the, the best place for their students right now, so they want them to go elsewhere. News Channel 3 has uncovered previous allegations of Lakeside staff abusing and improperly restraining students. In November, the state ordered staff to be retrained in handling students who misbehave. Ackley says her grandson has been at Lakeside for just two weeks. She says these pictures show the abuse he suffered during that time. He's been restrained. I see the marks and look what they did. They killed a child. What if that were my grandson? Now we talked to Ackley on camera and not his, not her grandson, given the uh, boy's age. Now, just to be clear, this is not a juvenile detention facility, meaning uh, students who go here are able to roam free. In a statement, the company that owns Lakeside Academy says they are committed to making the necessary changes to ensure something like this never happens again. Ivy Kalamazoo, Mike Kravesick, News Channel 3. Yes, I'm here. Yes, I'm here. Hey, tell me exactly what happened. Um, we have a student that was in a restraint, and, and now he's unresponsive. Academy student who died last week. An attorney working with the family says Cornelius Frederick went into cardiac arrest after staff at Lakeside Academy restrained the boy. Police say staff restrained him after he threw food in the cafeteria. News Channel 3's Mike Kravesick joins us live outside Lakeside Academy after speaking with the attorney representing the boy's family. Mike. Well, Eric, as you can imagine, the boy's attorney is searching for justice and for answers in this case. He says under normal circumstances, anyone being restrained properly would still be alive. Attorney John Marco says Cornelius Frederick had no family to care for him. The 16-year-old from the Detroit area ended up at Lakeside Academy, a rehabilitation center for troubled and orphaned teens. He was basically an orphan. I mean, he had a, a tough childhood. Marco is now working with Frederick's relatives to get answers about the teen's death. He didn't deserve this. He should still be here with us. The 16-year-old died at Bronson Hospital Friday. Police say last Wednesday, staff at Lakeside restrained Frederick after he threw a sandwich at another student in the Lakeside cafeteria. This newly obtained 911 call captures a staff nurse calling for help. We have a student that he was in a restraint and now he's unresponsive. Is he breathing? Um, yes, but lightly. The boy's autopsy results haven't been released. Marco says preliminary evidence suggests the heart attack was triggered by choking. If you choke someone, you restrain them the wrong way, they can die. Uh, and that's what it looks like happened here. Witnesses say the teen yelled he couldn't breathe before passing out. So there's a thing called cardiac asphyxiation. Marco says there's similarities with the case of Eric Gardner who lost consciousness and died after being put in a chokehold by New York City officers in 2014. You know, this is a commonly known phenomenon. The State Department of Health and Human Services is now investigating Lakeside Academy. Fearing for the student's safety, eight states and Michigan started removing students from Lakeside. 
The facility had 150 students less than a week ago. Now only half remain. Lakeside says the employee involved in the incident has not returned to work. Police right now are investigating the boy's death in the past. Lakeside says what happened was a tragedy and that the facility was taking steps to prevent something from happening like this in the future. By McCallum, Mazzeo, Mike Kravcic, News Channel 3. Details now on a story we first brought to you as breaking news yesterday. Lakeside Academy is stripped of its license following the death of one of its students. That decision coming from the state after a six-week long investigation. That investigation revealing that 16-year-old Cornelius Frederick died after Lakeside staff restrained him for throwing food in the cafeteria. It happened at the end of April. Investigators say a staff member sat on the boy's chest for nearly 10 minutes as he lost consciousness. News Channel 3's Mike Kravcik has been following the story since the very beginning. Tonight, he's sitting down with the Children's Services Agency director, who is not hiding her disgust with what happened. DHHS Family Services Director Ju Yong Chang says it's exceedingly rare for a child welfare facility like Lakeside Academy to have its license revoked. Chang admits there are signs of trouble here long before Cornelius' death. She says the restraint that ended his life was excessive and the events that happened right after were equally disturbing. Investigators say staff members pushed Cornelius Frederick to the ground after throwing a sandwich in Lakeside Academy's cafeteria back on April 29th. Records show multiple staff members then put Cornelius into a restraint that put the teen flat on the floor. The idea is to try and prevent that individual from hurting themselves or anyone else. Ju Yan Chang leads DHHS's Children's Service Agency. She and investigators looked at security video, which shows one staff member sitting on Cornelius's chest for nearly 10 minutes during the restraint. There is never at any point, from my understanding, where you are supposed to lay on top of the um, chest of a child and as part of that restraint. When Cornelius began to lose consciousness, Chang says supervisors and nursing staff waited 12 minutes to call 911 or attempt CPR. We have a student that he was in a restraint and now he's unresponsive. The 16-year-old went into cardiac arrest and died two days later. Someone tried to lift Cornelius up. Um, we know that staff said that they thought he was joking around, that, um, you know, he, that they thought he was just laying there as an act of um, uh, just not wanting to listen to them. DHHS is now banning the use of physical restraints in all of the 150 state juvenile facilities in Michigan. Police are still investigating the boy's death. The prosecutor's office says it'll make a charging decision next week. There was warning signs, complaints, problems with SQL and Lakeside for years, and no one seemed to listen. Uh, and it took the death of Cornelius for people to start listening. DHHS has documented dozens of complaints of abuse and improper restraints of Lakeside residents over the years. There was a culture where this type of activity was accepted. Chang admits the state should have stepped in sooner. There were clues that um, we didn't pick up in time. Chang says another Lakeside staff member used the same type of restraint on Cornelius and another student back here at the academy in January. She says the agency never found out about it, so nobody investigated. Lakeside Academy says it's in the process of exploring whether it'll file an appeal to the state's decision. Meanwhile, a rally for Cornelius Frederick will be held here tomorrow afternoon. In Kalamazoo, Mike Kravcik, News Channel 3. Oregon lawmaker is speaking out about the death of Lakeside Academy student 16-year-old Cornelius Fredericks. Fredericks went into cardiac arrest and died two days after he was put in what investigators call an improper restraint by staff members for throwing a sandwich. Now a state senator from Oregon is coming forward saying she warned the CEO of the company that contracts with Lakeside months ago that a student would die from being restrained. News Channel 3's Mike Kravcik joins us from Lakeside Academy with this story. Mike. Well, Lakeside contracts with a company named Sequel, and Sequel has had various issues in other states in the past. Oregon State Senator Sarah Gelser said she was here on campus visiting back in January and told her concerns about the company to the CEO. Sequel Youth and Family Services manages 39 programs in 20 states, including Lakeside Academy in Kalamazoo. 
they are able to make a ton of money. It is a for-profit organization, even though the local organizations might be nonprofit, and they are able to shield themselves from liability. Oregon State Senator Sarah Gelsner started to learn about improper restraints being used by SQL staff members at an Illinois facility late last year found that small children, nine and 10 year olds were being subject to these same types of restraints that you saw with Cornelius. Supine restraints where you're held on the ground, uh, immobilized facing up. In January, she visited Lakeside Academy since 28 foster kids from Oregon were sent there. She says she expressed her concerns about improper restraints to sequel CEO Chris Russo's. He indicated he believed they were safe. I said I believe that a child would be seriously injured or die as a result of bad restraints in sequel programs. Back in January, state investigators say Cornelius was strained for 30 minutes with seven staff members aiding in the restraint, some laying on his upper chest, others on his abdomen, and one person seen kneeling on his leg. It was the April 29th restraint where one staff member sat on Cornelius' chest for nearly 10 minutes that led to his death. Restraint is not therapeutic. Restraint is violent, it's dangerous, it's inappropriate, and it's unnecessary. It injures kids and it killed Cornelius. Over the weekend, Governor Whitmer says she will make sure SQL will not operate in the state again. Late word, SQL says it's fired the director of Lakeside Academy and 10 others involved in that restraint that churned deadly. The Kalamazoo County prosecutor says he'll decide this week whether anyone involved will be charged with the crime. Live in Kalamazoo, Mike Krafsik, News Channel 3. Tonight we are seeing with our very own eyes what really went on inside Lakeside Academy in Kalamazoo that led to the death of a 16-year-old student. Cornelius Fredericks died on May 1st. Now surveillance video from inside the facility shows why staff restrained the teen and how long they held him down. News Channel 3's Mike Krafsik joins us live from Lakeside Academy to break down exactly what this video shows. Well, Erica Cornelius Frederick's family attorney, uh, Jeffrey Fager, says the video shows a culture of fear and abuse that Lakeside students felt here in Kalamazoo. Now, the attorney says Lakeside staff regularly practice suffocation on children as a form of discipline. In the video, other students watched as staff hold Cornelius Fredericks to the floor. We want to warn you, some of the images you might see may be disturbing to some. This video shows 16-year-old Cornelius Fredericks throw his sandwich inside the youth home's cafeteria. Lakeside staff pushed the teen off his chair and onto the floor, flat on his back. You could see staff members pile on top of Cornelius, an orphan in their care. State investigators say the staff restrained the teen for nearly 10 minutes. During that time, the video shows other staff members pile on top of him, even after the teen appears to go limp. He urinated on himself. They deprived him of oxygen, uh, and his brain suffered irreversible reversible brain damage. Footage taken inside the cafeteria shows Lakeside's nurse Heather McLogan come in and stand over Cornelius for several minutes. And left to lie on a floor lifeless with no one providing any medical care or treatment for him, including a nurse who is there. Investigators say it took another 12 minutes for staff to call 911 or start CPR. Cornelius died two days later on May 1st his cause of death, suffocation by restraint. And what it occurred to me as I watched this videotape is that the employees of this institution don't consider these children to be human beings. Attorney Jeffrey Figer says Lakeside staff restrained and suffocated Cornelius in a similar manner for an even longer period of time back in January. Suffocation was regularly practiced upon children. They, they called it fearing. The first two staff members to restrain Cornelius and the lakeside nurse seen on video standing by are charged with involuntary manslaughter and child abuse. Cornelius wasn't a human being. He was a uh, commodity. Um, and as a result, this type of, uh, of inhuman behavior could, could exist. Figer is calling on the Kalamazoo County Prosecutor's Office to charge other staff involved in the restraint. Video shows up to seven people holding him down. The kinds of horrors that we've witnessed on this videotape would never be disclosed to us if Cornelius had survived. 
We got a response from Kalamazoo County Prosecutor Jeff Getting. Getting says his office is investigating if additional charges are warranted. Now, Figer filed a $100 million wrongful death lawsuit against Lakeside Academy and Sequel Youth and Family Services. That's the company that oversaw the youth facility. The for profit company operates 60 facilities nationwide. In Kalamazoo, Mike Kravsik, News Channel 3.